Hi guys, um, so my name is Bree. I'm an occupational therapy student and I just wanted to go over a couple of ASL basics to help you guys in the clinic or wherever you work in the future if you are working with a deaf client. Just a couple tips on grammar, um, some communication strategies, a couple basic conversational signs, and um, just some different tactics that you can use to help you gather an occupational profile and get over communication barriers and bumps because um, I think it's super important that we clearly understand our clients when we're working with them in the future and it can be a little bit difficult when there's a bit of that communication barrier there with our deaf clients. So a couple things. Um, First, ASL is its own language. It's not just a visual depiction of English. Um, it does have its own grammar rules that are important to keep in mind um, when you are communicating with someone who is deaf and uses ASL as their primary language. The first thing is that most of our deaf clients will have a sign name and those are just a shortcutted version of their name. So typically when you're introducing yourself, you would fingerspell your name, like I'll fingerspell mine right now. And that's just doing the individual letter um, for how your name is. But deaf clients um, have a shortcut for how to sign their name. And those can only be given to you by someone who is deaf. So you can't make your own sign name for yourself. Um, that would be considered disrespectful within the deaf community. So if your deaf clients or any deaf people that you know in the future do give you a sign name, um, you can share that with other deaf people that you meet, but you can't make one up for yourself. So that's just an important thing to know when you are introducing yourself, if you can fingerspell, fingerspell your name for them. Um, the ASL alphabet, there's a ton of graphics you can find online to learn it, but I will go through it pretty quickly right now. So we have A, B, C, it's like this, D, like this, kind of just the first finger, E, F, kind of opposite of D, G, looks like this, just to the side, H, I, J, I'll do that again, J, K, looks like this, L, M, you have all three fingers over for M, and then N is just two. O, P, Q, R, S, and then T is just the one finger. U, V, W, X is just like a hook, Y, and then Z, you're going to draw it out, Z. And if you have a double letter in your name, like I do, Brianna is my full name, so I would go B, R, I, A, and then for the double N's, I would slide, and then do the A. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, ASL does have its own grammar, and a lot of that is going to involve facial expressions. So when asking questions, if you are asking a yes or no question, you want to raise your eyebrows um, at the end of the question. So if I was asking, um, do you live in a house? And that's a yes or no. So my eyebrows would go up at the end and they would say yes or no. Um, if I am asking a WH question, like a who, what, when, where, why, or which question, um, your eyebrows are going to go down at the end. So if I was saying, you live house or apartment, which, my eyebrows go down. And we'll go over some more of those signs I just did slower so you guys can learn them. But I did want to establish at the beginning um, some of those grammar rules for asking questions because you know we ask a lot of questions particularly in our occupational profiles another one i just demonstrated is shoulder shifting 
So if you're providing two options, like I did house or apartment, you are going to shift your shoulders between the two options. And facial expressions in general, there are a lot that go along with different signs and different um, grammatical sentence structures. And we won't get into all of them, but just know it's very important to be expressive facially when working with these clients because it's going to convey some of those things that our vocal inflection would convey when we're talking. Um, so I can tell, you know, if you are stern, if you're happy, if you are laughing, if you're upset based on your vocal inflection, but obviously your deaf clients are not going to be able to hear that. And that's what is conveyed through facial expression with ASL. So just try to smile, um, use your eyes, use your face, use different things as much as you can when you're communicating because that, especially if you're telling a story or anything like that, that expressiveness is very important for um, a visual depiction of tone. There is also some mouth shapes that are gonna go along with different signs. So like the sign, this is the sign for big. You would go cha with your mouth, but you're not gonna say like cha while you are um, signing that sign. There's also like for small, you're gonna make your lips really same for thin. And those are just different things that you might see people do. Um, again, I won't be able to go over all of them in this quick video today, um, but those are some different things you might encounter. Of course, um, when we're going through some different signs, I'm not going to be able to cover every single sign you might need to know um, when you're working with these clients. So it's important to know of different types of communication strategies that you can use. Writing is one that works really well if you have a client that is able to, has the fine motor capabilities to write or to type. Um, there's talk to text if um, they might be able to use that if they're familiar with it. That one's going to be less common, especially if someone was born profoundly deaf. They might not be able to convey talk to text as easily. Um, but those are some different strategies that you can use. You can also use gestures um, and acting that are not formal signs to get your message across. And you can ask your clients if they might be able to lip read. So um, direction is very important in ASL. So if I'm asking a question to a client, if they can lip read. So this is the sign for lip reading. You have two and you're going to move that in a circle over your lips. So I say you lip read, you and I would do the U again at the end, again with the eyebrows down for the question. And, and they would answer the question. So that's one way you can ask them if they lip read and then you can just make sure to talk as clearly but as normally as possible. Don't over exaggerate your lip root movements if they lip read because that will make it a little bit more difficult for them to understand what you are saying. Um, another question, so we're just going to learn the difference. This is the sign for deaf, so you kind of have a D hand shape like I showed you earlier, and you're going to go mouth to ear, so you can say you deaf, you, and that's the proper ASL grammar to ask if someone is deaf in the yes or no format. The sign for hearing, if you are a hearing person, it's like this, so that's how you could say you're hearing. But if you want to say that you know signs, this is the sign for signs, no signs. Maybe you can say you know a few or you know a little bit, um, anything like that. So know a few signs, know a little bit, few, it's like this, few, just kind of move the fingers. So those are just some establishing baseline. And so you can um, ask them their name, say your name, what? eyebrows down because this is a WH question. So for those WH questions, um, we can do what is like this, like I just showed you, you have both hands, what. You can do when, it's kind of like doing a clock, when, who, what, um, who is like this, where, just kind of going to the side, why, you have that middle finger is gonna go Y. 
and then which, kind of like you're weighing two options. So again, who, what, when, where, why, and which. And that WH classifier is always going to go at the end of the question. So if I'm saying your, which is this, your, name, tapping two fingers on top of each other, name, what. I would put the what at the end. So your name, what. And that's how you would do that to ask them their name. And then you can move on to asking some of those occupational profile questions once you've established, if they communicate in sign, if they can lip read, what their name is, different things like that. And um, just making sure to pay attention to your eyebrows, your facial expressions, and that sentence structure. So to gather an occupational profile, obviously there's a variety of questions that you can ask. Um, and I'm gonna go over just a couple different occupations, um, some hobbies that people might have, some feeling signs, some family signs, how to establish family, some home signs about where they live. Um, but there's such a variety of different things. Um, so just be aware of that. There are a lot of resources out there that you guys can use. Some of my favorite online ASL dictionaries are Handspeak and signing savvy you can just find those on google they're free resources and they give you it has little videos so you can type in a word on there say i want to know what the sign for knitting is i can go type knitting in there and it pulls up a video of someone signing it and if there's multiple different ways to do that one sign it'll have all of the videos on there so those are some great resources to have you can also find used ASL dictionaries literally in any used bookstore sometimes these can be a little outdated but they do have um, pictures on them of how to do the signs so those are some resources that are out there and you know if you go through if you do a chart review on a client that is deaf and you want to prepare on how to ask some questions and how to have some conversation with them beforehand. Those are some great resources to look into. But all of that being said, I feel like I've covered all of those basics there. Um, we can get in to going over some actual conversational signs. So first, you might wanna ask how they are. So you're gonna say, how are you? How are you? And that is one of those eyebrows are gonna go down because that's an open-ended question. So how? You have your two hands, they're like this, and you're turning, how, how, and then you. Or you can say, this one's a bit more informal, so keep that in mind with this one. What's up? What's up? If you want to ask someone what they did, you can say, what do? This is the sign for what do. So um, if I was asking maybe what somebody did this week, this is the sign for week, so you're going all the way across your hand, week. So, and this is the sign for now, now, week, what do? Um, again, so this is now. If you're starting a sentence in ASL, will always start with the time frame if you're including one. So, past, present, or future. So, this week, you, what do? last week you what do some things you can ask um, if you want to know how they're feeling say feeling. how so how this is again you'll use how this is a sign for feeling again it's that middle finger bent feel so you feel how you um, and then we'll go over a couple of those different feeling signs. So the sign for happy, I have flat hands and they're gonna come up, happy. The sign for sad, kind of open hands. Sign for depressed, it's gonna be those fingers again, depressed. And you're gonna move your shoulders down when you do that. Happy, they're coming up. Um, angry or mad, you're going to have this claw hand shape and it's going to come up. Mad. 
Um, maybe they're tired, so you're going to have flat hand shape. Tired. Again, making sure to use your body and your facial expressions. Tired. Stressed. Going to have a fist. Five. Stressed. Um, maybe they're worried. Worried, so you're going to fold those in there. Worried, and you're just going to move those in around your face. Um, Bored, you start here kind of like you're picking your nose and move out. Bored, 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 either way. Um, if they're comfortable, comfortable. Just moving that flat hand shape down. Maybe they're just, okay, so-so. Those are both options. And sign for hurt or pain, which is one that is very important. We wanna know, we wanna make sure to check if they're in pain, pay attention if they say they're in pain. You have two pain, you're twisting it in. And this will often be modified to show where the pain is. So if I had a headache, pain, pain. Or maybe my shoulder hurts, pain, over here. Um, so those are just a couple feelings signs. So if you, again, you say, you're feeling how? And they can run through some of those. Happy, sad, angry, tired, worried, stressed, bored, comfortable, or hurt. Okay. So those are just a couple of those feeling signs. And again, there are so many different ones. So if you wanna look up online, hand speak or signing savvy, really reliable sources for some of those. Um, now to ask about people's family or living situations, this is the sign for live, live, or you might see some people sign it with two L's, but either way, it's going from bottom up, chest, live. So if I wanted to ask where somebody lives, I could say, you live where? You. And if you want to know if they live in a house or an apartment, sign house. It's kind of like you have a flat hand shape and you are just drawing a house. The sign for apartment is the A-P-T. So you're just going to do that really fast, A-P-T. It's pretty quick and easy. So I could make that a which question, which I demonstrated earlier. So I could say you live house, again, remembering to shift these shoulders. So house or apartment, which. So that's one way you could ask where they live. Um, if maybe they indicate where they live and you wanna know if they have stairs in their house, the sign for stairs is just like a little person walking up the stairs, a little stick guy. So I could say, you have stairs, you. And that will be those eyebrows up for that open-ended question. So stairs, you have, you, eyebrows up. And they could say yes or no. Um, a couple things to ask maybe what they like or what they don't like. So you could say this is the sign for like. So you're using middle finger and thumb like pulling it off of the chest and if it's don't like they're pulling it off throwing it away don't like sign for want is you're kind of having that claw hand shape want or don't want and you pull it in throw it away so those are signs for so i could say you like eyebrows up because it's a yes or no question insert whatever thing i'm asking about maybe i'm asking if they like to read so you like read you and they can answer yes or no so we will go over a couple i just have a short list of a couple of different hobby or occupation signs but again so 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 many options out there cannot stress this enough um, to look into some of these for yourself so cooking, you're gonna have flat hand on flat hand, cooking. Baking is like you're putting something in the oven. So here's the top of the oven and here is our pan, baking. Knitting, it's like you have two knitting needles and you are going knitting. 
like that. Reading, reading, or reading books. So you have, like your eyes are looking down, reading a book, or maybe they like to read the newspaper. It's gonna be newspaper. Maybe they're a learner, they're in school and they like to learn. This is the sign for learning. Um, if they like to play sports, play, and then you can either look up the sign for various sports. They tend to be a little bit, this is football, um, baseball, there's a lot of different ones. Or you can fingerspell the word sports, S-P-O-R-T-S. But this is the sign for play. It's a Y hand shape. Playing. Maybe they like to play video games. So you can have a controller, like you're holding one, moving your thumbs. Video games. Because it's a sign for games. Video games. Um, if they like writing, it's kind of like you're holding a pencil, but not on a perfect tripod. <laughs> but you're holding a pencil, writing on paper. Writing. Photography is another one. You're gonna up like you're holding a camera up to your face. Click, click, that's photography. This is also the sign for picture, if they like to take pictures. Dancing, dancing, like a person dancing on the dance floor. You kind of have that upside down K or that P hand shape. Dancing, maybe they like to spend time with their friends or talk to their friends. This is the sign for friends talking to my friends, maybe I call my friends, um, shopping. If they like to shop, you're gonna have flat, and this is like you're holding a wallet, shopping. Running, you're gonna have two L's, put them here, run, 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 run. Um, if they just like to exercise or work out, exercise, maybe like to go camping, you're gonna have Kind of like a rock and roll hand shape, camping like you're making a tent. And if they like to watch TV or watch movies, this is the sign for watch. The movie mount off of your chin, watch. And then if they're watching TV, it's just T and V, or movies is like this. So kind of have that fist and that five, shaking it back and forth. Watch movies, watch TV. Okay, so those are a couple of those. Um, I'm gonna run through also as well some family signs. So signs for different family members. Again, I showed you friend, um, but we'll talk about family. So this is mom. Um, oh, before I get into this, let me mention, all female signs are going to be on the bottom half of the face and all male signs will be at the top half. So again, mom is tapping the chin dad tapping the forehead grandma move mom off or dad off and then for grandpa obviously dad is off we have aunt sign for aunt which is a right down here or uncle which is the u up here cousin since that is going to be more gender neutral is right here in the middle of the face it is the c hand shape shaking there Sister, kind of have this, and you're gonna move it down here. Sister or brother, moving that one hand shape off the top. So my sister or my brother, and then we have daughter or son, daughter moving off the bottom, or holding a baby, daughter or son off the top. So those are a couple family signs you can ask people if they live with, so it's like, you live, this is the sign for with, who, and then they can indicate which family members they live with or friends, if any. Um, so those are a couple ways to ask about that. Again, just um, a couple notes. I've ran through a sh very, very short list of vocabulary, and this is not at all going to cover all of the signs you might see as well as all of the variations of signs you might see because people do sign things a little bit differently. So a couple of things to note, there is different regional 
signs for different parts of the U.S. Some things are signed a little bit differently in a few places, so you might need to ask for clarification. So if you need someone to fingerspell something, it's just like this, fingerspell. Or you might need to ask someone to slow down if they're signing really fast, slow down. You just bring your hand up your arm slowly. So those are a couple of things you can ask to sign slow. You can ask them to fingerspell a word. So say I had used the word daughter and you didn't remember that, you can say that sign what and have them ask them to fingerspell it. Um, with storytelling, there are is a lot of use of directional signs and classifiers. So classifiers are like, this is an example of a classifier for a person. So if I was telling a story and my person walked to the store, walk, 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 I would use that. And that's me indicating that the person I said, maybe it's my mom, walked to the store. Um, there's also classifiers for things like cars or boats. They look like this. So those are some things you might see that are not a one sign fits all situation. They are contextual. Um, directional signs, if I'm saying I called you, for example, call, but I move that towards you, or you called me, it's moved towards me. Um, so if I am going to the store with you, sign with you. I don't have to point at them for that, I can just say with you. So if I'm saying come, which is a sign for come, with me. Um, for just kind of transitioning into some other things, we can say, are you ready? This is the sign for ready. So I have two R's and you're moving them out. Go. You can say stop. Stop. Or start. You have start. Moving it in there like you're starting a car. Um, you can also say that something is hard. So you're going to have two kind of like quote, air quote marks. Hard. Or that it's easy, easy, something like that. Those are some things you might see. Um, you can also ask about somebody's work. So this is the sign for work. And then there's a long list of jobs that I'm not going to run through with you. But again, you can access those online or have them fingerspell their job. Um, but you can ask work, you, what do? So that'd be one way to do that. Or you can ask about school. This is a sign for school. It's just two flat hands tapping on top of each other. School. So you could say, you school where, like as in why they go to school. Or you can ask um, if they're a student. So sign we learned earlier for learn, learning. So if I wanted to turn learn into student, it becomes learn er. So I move person. So learner. So I say you student you like that. Um, so that's something a way to ask about education or work um, in your occupational profile. So yeah, um, I think that is all the signs I had to run through with you guys today. I know I've said it several times in the video, but there's absolutely no way I can go through everything that you guys might need to know when gathering an occupational profile and doing therapy with your client. Um, so keep in mind some of those communication techniques that you can use, asking in the finger spell, writing them down, um, texting, typing it up on your phone if it's easier than writing, things like that. Also using gestures. Um, and online resources to gather some sign information before speaking with a client. You can Google a sign if you need it in the session, things like that, um, that can help you overcome some of those communication barriers. But I do hope you found some of these vocabulary and grammar um, quick tips helpful and that you can use them in the future when communicating on your deaf clients. Thank you for listening.